this is why satan is isolating the church to fight the church and one of the ways the devil is fighting the church is to make sure that membership starts declining thank god for online thank god for those wonderful things the, the reach of the internet but can i tell you this if you're a man of god pray that god will bring people and not a few i am telling you this if the space is there push the building open it expand it the building is not it didn't come from heaven it was man-made break that building and open it and give god space for as long as there is one sinner still left in enugu there is one more person who loves jesus let them find their way to the church i came and i saw many overflows here i said may god bless the man of god because you expect that more people will come please hear what i'm telling you if we do not take the issue of souls and church may god forbid it that a season will come in enugu when the mo most of the people in this place don't go to church that would be terrible this was the mistake the west made they made this mistake 20 30 40 years ago now all those young boys who did not go to church are now the leaders and they are only doing what they know yes we were not raised to honor god don't come here and come and talk to us about god every generation respects what they agree with if they didn't grow with god as part of their mind control system don't assume that they will later just come train up a child he says a child there does not just mean the one you gave birth to physically train up a spiritual child in the way he should grow and when he is old he will not turn from it may house on the rock keep expanding in the name of jesus christ may house on the rock in enugu continue to find many who come to jesus it is called a house that is on a rock that even at these times of turbulence it is my prayer that all across the length and the breadth of enugu that the angels that gather the harvest that they will bring people from everywhere in the name of jesus christ and for every other church that is represented in this land please be intentional and go after souls look at me i don't mean to offend you but let me tell you where souls are there is a place they are souls are not just in another man's church souls are in the beer parlor you must go there souls are in many many places that need the power of god do not just move and want to bring people and bring people who are already matured and processed bring people and start from the beginning he said go to the byways compel them to come and be ready to build them a good leader does not just make followers listen to me carefully a good leader transforms followers into leaders like your pastor has done and then he makes those leaders agents of change this is what dr miles monroe taught us an attack on church growth number two i may not have the time to teach it i'm sorry the second thing i'm preaching this from the depth of my heart because i share the burden of your man of god i know that he organized this conference and especially this session because many of you have been praying as to why things are not working in this end time can i be sincere with you if you are not about souls if you are not about revealing jesus if you are not about teaching doctrine if you are not about discipleship be ready for empty pews be ready for empty pews i vowed a vow under god sir that i will never gather the people of god to come and waste their time from morning see people come six hours seven hours before church starts and they sit down waiting patiently and ministry starts and i waste people's time no the ones who taught us and mentored us did not teach us to waste people's time they taught us to carry the responsibility of a visionary whilst you are teaching people it doesn't matter whether it's at a house cell level it doesn't matter whether it's at a a departmental level it doesn't matter whether it's within the larger house there must be seriousness and intention given to everything that is being done the next attack 
is on the supernatural signs and wonders satan is gradually gradually bringing believers john chapter 4 and verse 40 let's look at 29 and then we'll go to 48 john 4 29 then we'll go to 48 satan is fighting the supernatural in the church let me tell you sincerely let me tell you sincerely if we throw away the supernatural this was the story between the woman at the well remember the woman with five husbands who had the sixth one while she was talking with jesus the bible says after she encountered jesus she ran what did she say come see a man who told me the things i ever did is this not the christ next verse very quickly next verse 30 the bible says they went out of the city and came to him why because of the impact of what happened to her she was a popular woman whose problem was known by all as soon as jesus solved her problem she was too grateful to keep quiet 31 in the meanwhile the disciples were praying and they said master eat and he said to them i have meat that you do not know anything about next verse the disciples said to one has anyone brought this that he has eaten and he said my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish uh-huh you know he said this are there not four months let's go to what what's the next um 48 for the sake of time just go straight to verse 48 jesus said except ye see signs and wonders ye will not believe except ye see signs and wonders can i tell you this people of god do not keep quiet with the marvelous things god is doing in the life of people let the city know that god healed people not exaggerated testimonies not lies genuine miracles that happen if you keep quiet you are shutting the manifestation of the glory of god testimonies are powerful tools that glorify the name of the lord the bible did not keep quiet over the things that jesus did in fact here's what it says in john chapter 20 it says many miracles did jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not recorded in this book but these are recorded that you might believe and that in believing you will have eternal life testimonies are more than just an attestation that a man is anointed you are letting people know that jesus is alive we have to keep bombarding the streets of enugu with what jesus is doing so that when people sit eating outside their discussion is did you hear what god did we hear that a madman just entered during the service in house on the rock and without even prayer it was even the usher receiving him that madness just disappeared and that now the person has become a chief usher while they are talking about it another person says oh that is even an old story come and hear about the woman who for eight years she's not had a child just last week she gave birth to triplets and someone says last week is too late let me tell you the one that happened yesterday that a whole family that had hiv from father to last born all of them went for a test and nothing happened can i tell you this there is something about human beings and there's something about africans they always go to where the news is happening even if to verify they say no i have to come and find out what did you say the lord is lifting people I hear that everyone who comes to that church in less than two weeks is having a job. It's, I don't believe it, but let me come. They are still welcome. Because when that, God knows how to prepare for those kind of people. Because their testimonies will be more powerful. They doubted openly. So when they acknowledge openly. I believe in miracles. I believe in signs and wonders. I will be lying to you today as a man of God. If I tell you those miracles have not played a role in the growth and what God has done in and through my life, it would be childish to begin to tell you the testimonies and the things that God has done. Many of them will not even be believable. That is the truth. But all I can say is to him be the glory for the fearful things that he continues to do. Fearful indeed. Number three, and we'll pray. 
the third thing i see the devil attacking in the life of churches is their finances i will end with this apostle finances don't matter keep going there's nothing i have to tell you you just keep going i assure you by god keep going one day one day time does not change anything but time reveals oh time reveals and time is such a brutal teacher it can teach men a lot you know for a long time this issue of money in the church there are two sides to it i'm, I'm working on borrowed time so forgive me we're not teaching finances here just have a few minutes and we'll pray i hope i didn't waste your time please pay attention to this one if you've been sleeping wake up god is speaking now can i tell you this i have seen more people compromise one time god's servant bishop david oedipo was talking to us and here's what he said the last thing he said was beware of the god of gold shocking beware of the god of gold beware of the god of gold i had that and it drummed my spirit i have seen finances lead people to leave their convictions the lack of it more preachers have compromised because of finances than any other thing they may start in truth preachers of righteousness let rent bills start coming generator fuel diesel starts coming payment of staff within the ministry and then you find out that people continue to do all kinds of ungodly strategies if you want to truly be a preacher of righteousness in this end time can i tell you you must obtain grace and wisdom from god to sort your finances both personal and ministerial because if ministerial is solved and your own personal one is not solved you are not entirely free i have listen i have counseled people by the grace of god who told me apostle i can't even pray again where did the attack come from finances do you know what it means for a man to come and be preaching perhaps multiple services and as he's preaching the text coming in his phone is his landlord just finish and wait for me he will come and meet me there and if for any reason maybe he wants to check a scripture i know you are laughing but there are some of you who know what this means i know a man of god whose wife refused that she was not going to be following him again for for service you, you can imagine what that does to the church because of the sheer anger why would god keep failing us like this as a family is he alive jesus did not keep quiet over the issue of finances he paid attention to the financial needs of the people he showed that he cared for the welfare of people because after preaching and doing everything he said don't leave them to go that way please give them something to eat they said we don't have enough he said i will do something about it but the people should eat they should not only hear and eat the spiritual meal god cares about our welfare he cares about our well-being according to second corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 god is able to make all grace abound towards us the bible says so that we having all sufficiency in all things the bible says there is a relationship between all sufficiency and good works if you do not have all sufficiency there is a limitation to the good works that you can do many years ago sir we went for a crusade preach my heart out and preach jesus but we did not have money for the transport of the people back we didn't have money to pay for where we stayed and we didn't have money to pay for the the bus that was going to take the people back to zaria at that time i had to tell them just go true story we negotiated with the people to go and wait somewhere in zaria i told them by the time the bus is getting there after maybe about six hours of the journey your money will be waiting for you there everybody went after a powerful crusade miracles and jesus was glorified but this finance thing the sound people who we rented sound from at the time 
it was 150,000. It looks small now. But my brother, 150,000, even now, it's not like it's exactly so small. <laughs> Can I tell you this? Do you know what it means for a preacher who stood and shouted for hours about a supernatural God? Now you are standing with the sound guys that came all the way from Kaduna to that place. You shouted about the supernatural God. They were setting that sound in the crusade. They saw the sick people healed. You dressed in suit and you finished everything. And now they are gone and the people say, please, our money. Where is that God who sent you? He could open a blind eye and he could not give us our 150,000. This your God has something. Which one is easier? To open a blind eye to heal a crippled man or to give you 150,000? And you see, at that point, no, I'm, I'm not sharing this. It's past. It's an old story. But I stood there wondering, God, but what is this? This is not fair. I had to write an agreement with them. God is my witness. Had to go around and look for someone to help me with 20,000 to give them. I said, just go. There are times that you lock the door, you are not praying. You are just walking around. And you are just sitting there. And the next time you are, you are on the window. Lord, we need 200 million for this building. Lord, we need 10 million or whatever for this bus and yet you have a conference to preach in and you have, a, have eight sermons to come and then your child comes with pta letter and you see that pta letter you almost will call it an evil report because of what was written there oh because of the pandemic and the times we have increased the school fees everything has increased except your finances and you are there can i be honest with you that's when satan comes what he told you 10 years ago and he said god forbid i will not do it he will come again satan is a master at maximizing desperation he will come to you you are a lady and you said i will not compromise i will live for jesus until everybody calls you and says i don't know this your thing you are doing i don't know the name of what you are doing with god and some unbeliever guy will come and tell you, listen, I'm not born again, no. I don't fear God, but I have money. You say, oh no, God forbid, it's not you I'm talking about. After five years, by yourself, you won't know when you will carry your phone and say good afternoon. If we don't teach the church this aspect, we will keep losing our precious people. The devil will wait for us to prepare precious people. And the devil will come and just carry them using the God of gold. I'm wrapping up. Let me show you something. Genesis 42, verse 1 and 2. It's a new season. It's a new season. When Jacob saw that there was corn, where? The location is wrong, but the supply is correct. I have a problem with the location, but I need corn. There is nothing wrong with the corn. The problem is where to get it. Egypt. Jacob said unto his sons, Why do we look upon one another? Verse 2. This is a prophet speaking. A man of God without corn. Behold, I have heard that there is corn in a wrong location. But there is nothing we can do. Get up and go thither and buy for us from there why so that we may live and not die the only thing that takes israel to egypt is hunger hunger when there is hunger even if you are a prophet you will find your way to egypt could that be why many men of god who started well unreasonable associations you never would have been part of. Are you ready for me to take you to go and see that politician or not? And he said, let me pray about it. Go and read about Balaam. They kept coming, they kept coming. Then they brought noble men and gifts. And he said, wait, don't go back. What did you say? Let me try. He used divination. Ah. 
How can I call on your name and then the finish? No way. No way. No way. After that encounter, I vowed and I made up my mind that everything needed to excel in ministry, I will learn. I said, Lord, I'm not ashamed. Until that time, I came from a background that did not seem to pay attention to these things. We were obedient to what we were taught. Fire, hunger, encounters, the Holy Spirit. We were having visionary encounters, heavenly encounters, miracles. Can I tell you this? A time came in my life when those my people who I could not pay for the, the services we used, they told me they were going to come and send police to come and arrest me and go and jail me. I said, Lord, am I going, who, did I kill anybody? At that time, today I'm laughing, but then I think the, one of the times in my life, I can tell you I was shaken to the core. Then I was waiting for my, I was waiting for my scholarship so that I would use part of it because all of my scholarships were dedicated for the gospel and I was waiting for it. The thing didn't come. I knew I was in trouble. Can I tell you this? By the privilege of God's grace, one of the reasons today while we stand and continue to teach truth, I will not lie to you, is because God has shown us mercy even in this area. If I have needs, probably by now I would have compromised. Preachers, we must be honest with one another. Let's not tell one another lies. By the grace of God today, if I sit down and there is, I, I know there is nothing to eat. And I have the prophetic, I can see your account number. You are joking. You think I'll keep quiet? just be condemning people and telling people walk in righteousness give them the tools that support righteousness provide them the tools don't tell the lady stop following bad men her mother is dying in the village there are 11 children none of them went to school she was the first person to stand and she feels i don't have anything except a beautiful face since beauty took esther to the palace let me try my own chance and say, leave that thing and focus on God. And then mama calls from the village and says, so this is how I'm going to die with 11 children. And the lady says, I will do anything. I don't care. See, I, I did not start ministering to adults. I started ministering among young people. By the privilege of God's grace, I can tell you I know a bit as to why many people don't stay with God. When the needs that overwhelm them Many of the people that I had the privilege to lead were either raised by single moms or were raised by um, some person somewhere or some freelance people moving around. Don't just condemn people and say you are an unserious person. Find out sometimes the motivation. We have to do something about this issue of finances. Even for preachers. When preachers run around politicians and compromise. Sometimes, some of them are not serious with God. But some are very serious with God. It's just that this thing has pinned them to the neck. When a man of God lifts up a song of worship and rain comes. Because there is no covering to where they rented. And drenches everyone. And the man of God stands and feels irresponsible. And says there is someone I know who does not love God. I can go and bow to him and coerce with him and he will give me something. Righteousness is supported by provisions. There has to be provisions. Satan is fighting the economy of the church. The balance is that we must not just teach people about money blindly. We must teach people prosperity as a tool to kingdom advance. When we do not create that balance, we fuel lost in people. 
So even people who are not serious with God like what we are teaching because it supports the lost in their heart. We must help people love Jesus and find Jesus. I have been treated so graciously by your pastor and the entire house on the rock. And I just, from, from, from the airport, even up till this place, I was just thinking, I can only imagine how much was spent in this conference. And I'm saying it sincerely. I would be stupid to just assume nothing happened with all of this, this love and this honor. You know how much it takes to fuel a crusade? Many of you here do crusades. Have you seen a preacher angry on the final day of the crusade? Because of the memory. We're about to pray. I'm giving you a prayer point already. Must we allow our families to be destroyed on the altar of compromise simply because of all of this? I don't know about you, but Enugu, as for me and my house, we will not only serve the Lord, we will serve the Lord truthfully, but we will embrace the whole counsel of God. The whole counsel of God. The whole counsel of God. God is a provider. God can make a way. God can bless people. Please rise up on your feet. Thank you for giving me this allowance. I want to pray for you as we prepare for the miracle service in the evening. Hosting God also means hosting the whole counsel of God. The Lord has taught us a number of things in this service. The reality of the divine life that is at work in us. That can help us to be fruitful or wise. The reality of our oneness with Christ. And I didn't have the time to teach you about our positional advantage. The Bible not only says we have been raised up, but it says we have been made to sit. There is a throne that we sit upon. Far above principalities, powers, thrones, dominions, every name that is named not only in this life but even in the dispensation to come the bible declares and now i shared with you the three major areas where the devil is attacking the church satan is attacking membership let me tell you this satan is attacking membership there are still about 7.6 billion people on earth and as far as i know the last time I checked, there are about 2.6 professing Christians. That includes those who are backsliding, those who are not talking of authentic Christians, just those who name the name of Christ. 2.6. And we want Jesus to return? There is still a harvest. If every church is filled to capacity, we will not scratch one hundredth of the souls that still need to be saved. And then we need signs and wonders please hear me tonight as you are coming don't only come inviting others come with your heart enlarged because I'm going to be teaching for a short time tonight and it's not only miracles that will happen tonight but I trust God that there will be a solid impartation this transference of grace that it will come upon you not only in ministry in the different areas paul said i long to see you that i may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye might be established god has shown us mercy by the privilege of his grace there is nothing exceptional in our lives our sufficiency is of god who indeed has made us able ministers of the new testament after the spirit and not after the letter for the letter killeth it is the spirit that gives life let your heart be prepared tonight you have tabernacled all through this conference open up your heart for all the sessions left but for now please lend me two or three minutes as you pray passionately you're going to ask the lord to plant in you a consciousness of your divinity 
the fact that God lives in you through his spirit, the implication of your oneness with Christ, open your mouth and sincerely pray, Lord, plant in me. I am tired of ordinary living. I am tired of living like a natural man. There is an implication to my being saved. I'm, I'm a child of God. 